very warm welcome, good evening, and thank you for taking the time to join us here today uh, on the Monday evening. I know many of you rushed down uh, from your office, from your home, uh, from the activities that you, you've been doing the, the, in the day to join us. Uh, but, you know, PM shared some major moves on housing at the National Day Rally yesterday in order to ensure that our public housing system meets three key objectives. And if you watch the National Day Rally, he came back to this slide uh, over and over again. And the three key objectives are first, keeping home ownership affordable. Second, maintaining a good social mix in public housing. And third, keeping the system fair. Fair in terms of people buying in different locations, the amount of subsidy and support that they get. Now, let me recap the changes that PM had announced and share a little bit more about the thinking behind them. And after that, we can have a discussion. We have engaged over 16,000 Singaporeans over the past year on public housing as part of Forward Singapore. And through our housing conversations, Singaporeans have reaffirmed the key principles of public housing, which are in line with our core values. What are they? First, keeping home ownership affordable. This will give Singaporeans a tangible stake in our country allows us to sink our roots, build our families, connect to the community. Second, maintaining a good social mix. We want a good social mix of Singaporeans in every town and region. And third, the system must be fair. Public housing should primarily be for owner occupation, not speculative investment. Now, HDB flats will continue to be an important asset for Singaporeans, but many Singaporeans told us during our Forward Singapore conversations that it is not fair for a small minority to gain large windfalls when they sell their BTO flats in popular locations on the resale market. At the same time, there are shifts in our housing landscape which we need to take into account. Uh, look at the slide on the screen. In the past, for instance, we had large tracts of undeveloped land to build our new towns and housing estates. These tend to be further away from central areas and we call them non-mature estates. They were not yet mature, they are still growing, still developing, still maturing. And that will be the mental model for those of us who are old enough to remember. And back in the 1990s and the early part of this millennia, 2000s, we launched many of these. Jurong East, Prachukang, Yishun, Sembawang, Sengkang and Pongo. But over time, our non-mature estates have also become a lot more developed, more well-connected with many amenities. And in fact, as PM described yesterday, they are effectively like mature estates, many of them. Our latest new town is Tenga, which HDB launched a few years ago after the military training area there was moved out. I recently joined uh, the first batch of uh, Tengah residents who are about to collect their keys and about to move into the very first project that's almost ready. And in fact, I told them before you, before the residents of Tengah, the last new town in Singapore was Pongol, which was launched more than 20 years ago. So since Pongol, it has been 20 years since we had our next brand new housing estate. So where have our new flats been coming from? Now, HDB will continue to build new flats in non-mature estates and increasingly, we will build more flats within and near to existing estates in central locations with more attractive attributes. This is good news for aspiring homeowners as well as young families who want to live near their parents or who desire the convenience of living near to the city or near to transport nodes for convenient access and cutting down on commuting time. So the question is, how should HDB price these flats? To ensure affordability, what HDB does is we assess the market value of each flat and then we apply a substantial market discount to bring the price of the flat down to levels which are affordable for different groups of Singaporeans. Okay, so determine what's the market value using valuation principles. Then you apply a substantial discount to bring the price down to the levels that Singaporeans can afford, different groups of Singaporeans. But think about it, 
If we were to continue to keep subsidies broadly the same across all areas at each launch, then what we should expect is that flats that are in choicer, more popular locations will be priced much higher than other flats. Now, some Singaporeans will then find that these prices are less affordable to them. And yet, those who can afford them and successfully ballot for them, for these popular flats, will get larger windfall gains when they sell these flats subsequently on the resale market. To many people, this is not inclusive because the better off can afford the higher priced BTO flats, even with subsidies. And for many people, it's also not fair. I mean, you know, these are people who get windfall gains. This is why we'll be making significant changes to the way HDB classifies and sells our new flats to uphold our key objectives of first, affordability, second, a good social mix, and third, a sense of fairness. So we will move away from the long-standing classification of mature versus non-mature flats or ma mature versus non-mature estates towards a new framework, standard, plus, and prime. So you have HDB standard flats, you have HDB plus flats, and you have HDB prime flats. Standard flats, you find them island-wide, they are standard subsidies and standard restrictions. Plus flats will be in choice locations within each region. More subsidies to keep them affordable and tighter restrictions to follow. What are prime flats? You would know them already, right? Prime flats are in prime central locations in Singapore. They get the most subsidies to make them more affordable to more Singaporeans and they come with the tightest restrictions. So actually plus and prime actually in a way also refer to how much restrictions are added to them and the amount of subsidies needed to keep them affordable. Now, you may be familiar with HDB standard, which are standard flats that we know today, HDB flats. They will continue to form the majority of public housing across Singapore. Standard subsidies and standard restrictions like the five-year MOP or minimum occupation period. So this is nothing new to you. HDB Prime. Many of you will know this as PLH or Prime Location Public Housing. These are the most prime central locations within Singapore. More projects in the Greater Southern Waterfront area and towns in and around the city centre such as Queenstown, Bukit Merah, Kalang Wampo. Alright, so clustered around the south near the centre, the central part of Singapore. Now, without us introducing the prime model, we will not be able to build affordable public housing in these choicer prime central regions. And they will largely be private housing catering for the well-to-do. So that was the thinking behind prime flats or prime location flats. These are very, very uh, central locations, right? The flat prices would then be very high, even if you give subsidies. And we will then effectively not be able to put affordable public housing. But we want to build HDB flats in those areas and not have those areas purely uh, private housing. Now, these HDB prime projects will have the most subsidies to make them affordable to more people. In addition to what we provide for standard flats, but consequently will also come with the tightest restrictions. So that is prime, and then you're familiar with them, and I described standard. But we will introduce a new category known as HDB Plus. This will be offered at choice locations within each region or near the core central region, particularly in attractive locations near transport nodes and amenities. So, for example, if it's next to an MRT station or near very good amenities, we will launch more projects in more developed estates and central locations such as Amokyo, Bishan, Clementi, Tropayo, Bedok, as well as Queenstown, Bukit Merah, Kalang Wampo. And we can expect some of these to be plus projects. Several projects in Mount Pleasant and Bedok Bayshore are also good candidates for this category of HGB plus flats. And in future, there will potentially be plus projects in what we now know today as non-mature estates because those are 
good locations within non-mature estates. As, as I said before, the non-mature estates are increasingly well-developed, well-connected, and some locations that are near transport nodes, good areas, choice areas in those estates can also be plus. Now, let me explain how the PLUS model makes flats at choicer locations within each region more affordable and how we keep our system fair. First, let me deal with how we will make them more affordable. To help Singaporeans who buy the flats from HDB, our new HDB PLUS flats will come with additional government subsidies. So you have standard subsidies for everyone and we put for PLUS flats additional subsidies. But these additional subsidies will be less than the additional subsidies we provide for prime flats. You follow? Okay. For fairness, those who buy new PLUS flats from HDB will enjoy higher subsidies and will be subject to a subsidy recovery at the point of their very first resale. So if you buy from HDB, you get additional subsidies to keep it affordable to you. But at your first resale, when you sell on the resale market for the first time, there is a subsidy recovery to account for the additional grants that you've been given compared to people who buy standard flats. And because the plus flats will enjoy lower subsidy than prime flats, their subsidy recovery rate will also generally be lower than for prime flats. But similar to prime flats, we will apply a longer MOP or minimum occupation period of 10 years for HGB Plus Flats. Owners of Plus Flats will also not be able to rent out their entire flat at any time. So not just the five years, throughout the whole duration of their flat ownership, the whole flat cannot be rented out. It's really for owner occupation. This, as I said, is to ensure owner occupation for such flats and deter those who intend to flip the flats for quick gains or rent them out for long-term yield. Now, we also thought long and hard about how we can keep plus flats affordable for Singaporeans beyond the very first owners. After these flats go into the resale market, possibly at the end of the 10-year MOP. We will do so through the following resale conditions, which will moderate demand and keep these locations affordable and inclusive over time. Like resale prime flats, only Singaporeans will be able to buy plus flats on the resale market. There will also be a 30-month wait-out period for private property owners wanting to buy plus resale flats. And we will also impose an income ceiling for resale buyers. For HGB plus flats, we will allow families who meet the prevailing BTO income ceiling to purchase all resale plus flat types. This is currently set at $14,000, which will cover 8 in 10 of our Singaporean households. Now, for singles who buy plus flats on the resale market, we will also set the income ceiling at $14,000, the same as for families. Except for the subsidy recovery, which will apply to the first owners, these conditions will apply to subsequent buyers to keep flats affordable beyond the first sale. As there are many systems and operational adjustments that are required, the changes that we've just described, that which PM announced yesterday, will be implemented in the second half of 2024. There will be no change to the treatment of the more than 1.1 million existing HGB flats, which will continue under existing rules. They will be unaffected. This means that your flats which have already been sold or which have already been booked under the current framework will not be reclassified. This means that Singaporeans who fall outside of the $14,000 income ceiling will still have access on the resale market to potentially the existing 1.1 million flats as well as standard flats as they enter the resale market. Now, how does HDB Plus, this category of flats, work. I've shared with you the Plus model parameters. Now you may be wondering, so how will Plus flats help with affordability? And I've worked out a few examples for you to follow, so please follow the uh, presentation slides as I describe to you. 
Let's say we have two couples, couple A and couple B. They're looking for a four-room flat now in the central region and they want it to be near a transport node, for example, near an MRT station. These are choice flats. They will be popular. In today's market conditions, such BTOs are priced around $650,000 before you apply grants. If you offer them as ordinary flats in mature estates, so if you don't make any change to the system, that will be the price that will be for the flats before grants. And this is so even after significant subsidies from government. Now you take for example couple A, earning $9,000, which is the income of a typical middle-income family today. They are eligible for an EHG or Enhanced CPF Housing Grant of $5,000 and will not need to pay any additional CPF or cash top-up to buy this flat. Couple A will have to use about a quarter or about 24, 25% of their monthly income with a monthly cash outlay of around $250. There is some cash outlay, but for this family, they may find that this is still relatively affordable for them. So they'll go for the flat. Now look at couple B. Couple B earns $7,000 as a household, less than couple A. They will be eligible today for EHG of $25,000. Now, this flat will be out of reach for couple B as they will need to use almost one-third of their monthly household income to pay for their mortgage. And you know this will exceed the macroprudential limit of 30%. They would need to make an additional top-up of $52,000 in cash or CPF and their monthly cash outlay would be around $400. So that is under the prevailing scheme. Let us now see what happens when this same flat is offered under the PLUS model in the future. The tighter resale conditions will help bring the price down. On top of this, as I said earlier, we will also give additional subsidies to further improve affordability. So although they are in good locations, choicer locations, right, which command higher value, by giving additional subsidies as well as tighter conditions, we are able to make them affordable to more groups of Singaporeans. And you see the combined effect of both is to reduce the price to around $550,000 and this is before we apply any grants. Now, back to working out the finances. For couple A, if they buy this as a plus flat, they now pay less than a quarter of their monthly household income. In fact, their monthly cash outlay is zero. This flat becomes even more affordable under the HDB plus model. For couple B, the couple that earns $7,000 a month, the $52,000 in additional top-up is now reduced to zero. They now place, pay slightly more than a quarter of their monthly income and a monthly cash outlay of about $250. And this flat, they may now feel, is within reach. Now, many Singaporeans tell us that they are willing to pay a bit more for a flat in a good location. And the HDB Plus model helps make such flats affordable to a wider range of Singaporeans. But even as we introduce HDB Plus flats, I would like to assure everyone that HDB will continue to build a wide range of flat options for every budget and need. And even with Prime flats, even with Plus flats, our standard flats will continue to remain the majority of our new flat supply. In fact, at the most recent BTO launch in May 2023, a typical three-room flat at Park Meadow at Tengah was selling for around $280,000 before grants. And for a family earning $3,000, a low-income family, they will be eligible for $65,000 in EHG. When they, apply, when they buy this flat, and they will not need to pay any additional cash or CPF top-ups. They will pay just under a quarter of their monthly income for this flat, most of which will come from their CPF. They will only need to pay $32 in cash outlay each month. Of course, the figures that I'm sharing with you today are really indicative and will change depending on future conditions 
future market conditions. But our commitment remains unchanged. We will continue to support Singaporeans of all income levels in their home ownership aspirations. Grants are progressively tiered to provide more support to those who are lower income families. And we will review these grants from time to time to ensure that enough support is provided. Now, you think about it. If we were to continue with the current framework, mature, non-mature, right? Not implement what PM had announced yesterday, then the fact is that flats that are priced in choicer locations, in locations that you consider better, near MRT, nodes, near facilities and amenities, in very well-developed mature estates, or even in non-mature estates but very desirable locations, these will be priced higher even if you give standard subsidies across the board. This includes project, projects like what PM had cited yesterday, Central Weave at Amokyo, where the biggest flats, the five-room flats, range from $713,000 to $877,000 before grants. And this is after heavy subsidies for HDB flats. And understandably so, Central Weave is right at the heart of Amokyo Town Centre, which is a mature estate. Central Weave is near to the MRT and the bus interchange. It's near a hawker centre, a wet market, Amokyo Hub and other amenities. Some people felt that these flats were unaffordable, but as PM had said yesterday, the project was heavily oversubscribed by Singaporeans, 17 times oversubscribed. Now, under the current framework, those who could afford such projects and manage to successfully ballot for them might expect to get a large windfall in future when they sell. At the same time, such prices will make it harder for families at the lower end of the HDB income ceiling to afford these BTOs in choicer locations. And you can expect that over time, society will divide. This new framework therefore allows us to price new prime flats and new plus flats more affordably, while ensuring that resale prices are kept within reach of a wider range of Singaporeans. This will ensure more social mixing, reduce the risk of social stratification based on where you live. This is a fairer system. In fact, there was some feedback uh, I got yesterday that prime, plus and standard suggest that actually we are dividing the uh, HDB population based on your income. I think if you don't implement this, that will be the outcome. Because in some locations, they're very desirable, they're very well served by transport and amenities. More people want to live there whether it's BTO prices being higher than in other areas or over time in the resale market, those areas will then attract better off families. But with prime, plus and standard, with prime and plus connoting more restrictions and more subsidies to keep them affordable for ordinary Singaporeans, the intent is actually a social objective, right? Because HDB is ultimately social policy. With these changes, as well as those we've made in recent years, let me now recap and briefly set out how we will support different groups of Singaporeans. Let me start with young home buyers, and I see some young home buyers in the room today. Now, many of you have told us that you would like to be able to buy a home in a good central location. You want to live nearer your parents and your family members, so you can take care of one another. Many of you have shared that these projects see stiff competition among buyers and very high application rates. It is not easy to ballot for these projects and the alternative of purchasing a resale flat in these areas may be a strain on young families' budgets, especially young Singaporeans who are just starting out in their careers. Going forward, even as standard flats remain the majority of our new flat supply, HDB will build more flats in these attractive locations so that you can have more housing options. The PLUS model will ensure that these homes remain affordable for you and for your children, the next generation. They will have to come with restrictions because these flats are for home ownership, for owner occupation. We are prioritising them for you if you want to settle, stay 
and put down roots. We have seen that these restrictions help to moderate application rates, which will make them more accessible for you. As a first-timer, you will continue to enjoy two ballot chances. If you are a first-timer parent or married couple who has never bought a residential property before you're buying your very first home, you will enjoy three ballot chances and enjoy priority under the Family and Parenthood Priority Scheme, or FPPS. These will continue to apply island-wide. Today, it is for non-mature estates, mature estates, as well as prime location housing. And from the second half of next year onwards, when the new classification comes in, these will also apply for all projects, whether they are prime flats, plus flats, or standard flats. And to further support first-timer parents and married couples who are buying their very first property, we have announced we have had announced that you will enjoy first priority under the FPPS if you apply for a four-room or smaller flat in a non-mature estate. But under the new classification, you will be able to benefit from the first priority under the FPPS in more locations across all standard flats, which are island-wide. This means that first-timer parent, parents and married couples should be able to select the flat after fewer attempts and have more choice in more locations. So those are for first-time home, home buyers. Let me recap for Singaporeans who are singles. Today, singles can buy two-room BTO flats in non-mature estates if you meet the age and income eligibility. You can buy any resale flat of any size except three-gen flats and PLH flats, right? This is the current rule. From our Forward Singapore and other engagements, we have heard that singles want to have more choice in your housing, to live near your family for mutual care and support. With the reclassification in the second half of 2024, eligible singles can buy two-room flexi BTO flats, whether they are standard flats, plus flats, or prime flats. This also means that singles will also be able to purchase two-room resale prime flats at the prevailing BTO income ceiling of $7,000. I had previously mentioned that for resale plus flats, we will apply the income ceiling of $14,000. This will apply to both families as well as singles, and singles may purchase all resale flat types except three-gen flats. This will allow singles to have more HDB plus resale flat options. So on the resale market, singles can continue to purchase standard or plus flats of any size other than a 3-gen flat. Or they can also purchase a resale two-room prime flat. Now to manage prices of plus and prime flats on the resale market, we will apply an income ceiling for singles buying such flats. Previously, as I said, singles were not allowed to buy any resale prime flats. But under the new framework, singles can buy two-room prime resale flats with a resale income ceiling of $7,000. Singles will also be allowed to purchase resale flats, resale plus flats of all sizes. To ensure that singles can afford the larger resale plus flats, the income ceiling for singles who are buying resale plus flats will be set higher at $14,000, which is the same as that set for families. Together, these moves will allow singles a wider range of options on our resale market. So that's the second category. For existing homeowners, especially our seniors, even as we expand access for singles, we will continue to set aside a proportion of two-room flexi flats supply for our seniors to facilitate right sizing. We will launch more public housing assisted living projects, which we call community care apartments, which pair senior-friendly housing with care options that can be customised according to the care needs of our seniors. And for seniors who would like to age in place, you want to you know, live your golden years in the place where you've lived all these years, we will enhance our HGB homes and precincts 
with fittings and amenities that are designed to meet our seniors' needs. SPM announced yesterday we will expand the EASE program, and EASE stands for Enhancement for Active Seniors, and offer more subsidised fittings under EASE 2.0 to make it easier and safer for our seniors to go about their daily activities within their own homes. And you can see on the slides, examples include rocker switches, easier to turn the lights on and off, smoke detectors, handrails at the flat entrance, you can see that on the bottom right, foldable shower seats, you see that on the bottom left, as well as widened toilet entrances for wheelchair users. We will enhance our HDB estates as well to make them more senior friendly. There will be more shelters, more rest points, more barrier-free access ramps for safer and more comfortable commutes for our elderly. We will have larger and more colourful signages with symbols that will help our seniors find their way home or find their way around the estate. We will also provide more health-promoting amenities to help our seniors stay active, such as fitness trails, exercise machines and therapeutic gardens. More details of this Age Well program will come at a later date. Now, with these changes, we will be better prepared to face upcoming challenges and write the next chapter of our public housing story together. We want to hear your thoughts and feedback on our public housing system as we continue to refine and improve it and work towards a future that's shaped by this vision of a home-owning society which is diverse and inclusive and has a fair and sustainable system. So we look forward to hearing from you at today's session. With that, thank you very much.